This podcast is not a substitute for a relationship with a mental health professional. Hey everyone, it is your girl and it's that time again for the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast with Andrea Wise Brown. And today we have a guest. We have a new guest, and I'm, hopefully I can call him my brother. Can I call yes, you my you brother? Yes, you definitely can. Okay, okay. And this is Mr. Carlton Young. And when I tell you he has a story to tell, he has a story to tell. And I believe that his story is going to create change continuously in the world. And so I am honored to have him here with us, family, so that he can share his story. Hey, Carlton. How are you doing, Miss Andrea? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, look, I want to start off by reading your bio. Okay. 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 So that people, you know, could uh, get a Didn't snippet. Say, know who this CY Come guy on. is. <laughs> so they, they, could know, they could know who you are. Okay. So, here we go. So, this is from Carlton Young. He says... I am a man of resilience, strength, and unwavering spirit. I am a kingdom man who wears many hats. I'm a son, husband, father, friend, and proud member of the bros, Omega Sci-Fi. <laughs> and literally, y'all, he spelled it like the bros, okay? That must be a whole thing. That's the bros thing. <laughs> okay, that's a whole thing. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, he says, I'm not just a survivor, I'm also a victor. Having overcome the aftermath of a gunshot wound to the stomach at point blank range and the self-inflicted wounds of my past, I hope to embody the power of resilience and transformation. My daily mantra is stop talking tough and living weak. That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's dope. Okay. Which reflects my commitment to being authentically Carlton and living my life moving in God's purpose. So now y'all, this is rooted in the principles of Genesis one twenty eight. I strive to leave a positive impact on the world around me, embracing his roles with passion and dedication. That's so dope. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that is so dope. Okay. So obviously you came up with this on your own. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma okay. That's pretty cool. Okay, Carlton. So, hmm. So first, I, I want to put out there, because I always like you guys to know the why and the how, how I got here, why why we are here. And so you know that we just did this men's series of helping men heal. And while doing the series, I uh, reached out to my brother, I call him my brother, uh, BJ. And so when I reached out to BJ about um, getting the series out there, he immediately said to me, I love what you're doing, but you need to meet this brother. He said, this brother also has a podcast and we're going to leave them with that, right? Because I want them to come over there and listen to you too, as I have. Um, but he said, not only does he have a podcast, but like y'all just got to get together because he said his energy is amazing. He's a good guy and you need to hear his story. So this is why Carlton is, is here today. I reached out and thank God you was receptive and you said, yeah, I'll do it. Most definitely. And when God opens the door, you got to walk through. I know that's right. I know that's right. Okay, Carlton. So, and this is the thing, y'all. I'm learning this story just like just like y'all are. Because I listened to, I listened to two of the podcasts. And I, I just, I didn't get the whole thing. I just mm -hmm. kind of got snippets of it. Right, right. right. So, I don't know if you've actually given it all yet. I've given it all here and there. But, you know, we can, we can, we can. Jump off the deep end, and I'll give you the uh, totality of Carlton Young and how I got to this point in my life. Yeah, from where I started. Um, so if we, you know, we would start back all the way at the beginning. Please. What you have is a uh, a baby born to a teenage mother, nineteen years old. Mm. Um, 
her boyfriend at the time, I don't know what you want to call it, uh -huh. um, eventually had two two women pregnant at the same time. Um, when my mother had me, you know, she was thinking that this was her boyfriend. And uh, she called the house and uh, uh, his mom said, uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but she said, okay. so-and-so is married now. You probably don't want to call here anymore. To your mother? To my mom. So now here you got a teenage mother, 19 years old, you know, trying to figure out her life as well. Right. With and the, she with, with, and she had already had you, right? Right. 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 Okay. Just, you know, I was born. Okay. You know, and, you know, she was thinking that this is going to be the person I'm with or what have you. And, uh, you know, that was, rug was pulled out from under. So she's at, you know, the crossword wondering where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. Um, we were living with my grandmother and my, and my two uncles and my aunt. Mm -hmm. And so it was my grandmother, my granddad, and my mom and her th her two brothers and one sister. Um, mom was working, you know, found a job, start working. Um, you know, one thing is like I don't look anything like my family. My my father, uh, my biological father, is light skinned. Okay. Most of my family is darker complected, medium complected. Oh. So as I'm growing up, it's like already that piece of tension I don't, is it I don't is it look, tension or it's not tension it's like i don't look like anybody in my family so is it feeling like i don't belong yeah, like i don't belong here like mm. am i supposed to be here right 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 um you know fortunately for my mom she met a man that i called my father i called my father until he uh, passed away god rest his soul um and she married him when i was four years old we moved from birmingham alabama from birmingham alabama we moved to uh florida he was in the military but Throughout this whole process, right, yes. like my mom used to say um, when I was, you know, two, three years old, like, where's my dad? Why does everybody else have a dad? I don't have a dad. Mm -hmm. Just asking, like, inquisitive questions. And she said, well, I'm going to find you a father. So, again, she married him. He was a great guy. Still, I didn't look anything like him either. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, we move. And also, you know, I'm from moved from my family to a military installation with a bunch of kids that don't look anything like I grew up. I grew up in a, in a, in a place that was predominantly black. Okay. Probably 80% black, 90% okay. black. Um, we go to Eglin air force base in Florida. I don't look like, you know, I don't, you know, I've never been around kids and it's just like, you know, like when you move from somewhere, it's like the shock of a culture shock. Yes. So, so I, wait, 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 but you got to tell us what did, what did they look like? So what was the difference? Cause I got mm -hmm. in your family, mm -hmm. they were darker skin. So mm -hmm. you light skin. You're mm -hmm. like, okay, I don't fit in here. However, when y'all went to move with, um, with your stepfather, yeah, you said that you didn't look the same. So what did they look like? Who were these now, people? Now you're moving into like all race and all ethnic, ethnic ethnicities. ethnicities. I got you. Right. And so. Just a, I just was just like a bad kid because I really just didn't know where I fit in. Okay. I always felt different. I used to get, get in so much trouble. Did like you? my mom would stay having to come up to the school, getting called to the principal's office, getting whoopings from my my, my dad and my stepdad. My, I call him my dad. I don't even call him my stepdad because okay. he actually adopted me. My mom. And, it, you know, this is like all through my up childhood and, and up to my teenage years. And it got to the point where. I used to get in so much trouble that my mom didn't know what to do with me. So she was she, it, it, she couldn't whoop me because that didn't do anything. Okay. She putting me in my room didn't do anything. She actually would start making me write book reports on books that she would make me write, read. And honestly, that would that ended up paying off now. In the long run. Yeah. Okay, but wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. Before you jump to the right. end, right? Because I want to know. So what did the other kids look like? So you're saying they were... I don't know, white, white Asian, white, that's what I'm Hispanic. Oh, you know, okay, multicultural, black, multicultural. So okay. I come from a you know a a a, 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 a primarily dominant black, black community yeah. to a multicultural community where there's a, like a little bit more discipline, a little bit more guidance, mm. you know. And then so from Florida we move to Germany. Okay. From Germany we go to Great Falls, Montana. So yeah, that sounds like a culture shock. Yeah, yeah. Double so, double. Yeah, so it's like you get get a little used to your surroundings and maybe start to fit in. Then you get uprooted and you move somewhere else. Someplace else. And then you do the same thing for four years and then you move somewhere else. Mm. So this is, you know, elementary, middle school, going into high school. And then going before I got in, before my uh, ninth grade year, my dad retired and we moved back to Birmingham. Back to Birmingham. So I go from that to this. 
and now I look, I, I, I have, I, I speak proper English because uh-huh. I've been around the, the country. Yes. I've been around the world. Been I have a little bit of, you know, a little bit different uh, vantage point of life. And so then I get back in that scenario and now they mess with me because you, you talk different, you dress different, you know, cause I was dressing like where I was at. Right. What, that's was right. In style. So right. And I dealt with that, you know, trying to navigate that space. So it was always me trying to figure out who I was, where I belong, mm. and what I, you know, who I was supposed to be, and what would happen is I would find myself not being my authentic self mm. because I didn't know who I was, right? And then I didn't know how I fit into every every environment that I was dropped in. Oh, that's so good, and I just want to say this: that's so good, and it's so good that you're aware of that because what happens is when you're developing as a child. Mm. That's when you start to kind of learn who you are, but that comes from stability, Mm -hmm. right? So being stable. And what you just talked about is from a child up to what, four years old, first of all, you feeling like, like you, you were unstable, even Mm -hmm. though there was a house full of people, Mm -hmm. but there was still probably not a lot of attention on you. A lot of, you know, Mm -hmm. people do, our parents do the best that they know how to do, right? That's right. So we know that that they do the best that they know how, however, there were a lot of needs Mm -hmm. that you didn't get. Right. Right. And your mom was just trying to survive because she Mm -hmm. was a child herself. Yep. Yeah, so then, you know, that's how we don't really form an identity. Mm-hmm. So you like who you didn't even know how to start yeah, who because am it I? comes from stability. Right. That's right. right. Wow. And so now you moved in one place. So you're like, okay, who am I here? Then you get uprooted, moved someplace else. And then it sounds like you had to do a lot of fighting. Yeah. Because is yeah. that why you were getting in trouble in yeah, Germany? I was a lot of fighting and then also just trying to fit in, right? Because you know, well if I if I if I move like they move, then maybe they'll accept me mm. for who I am. So it was either like you fight, I'm fighting because I didn't look like everybody or, you know, I'm, you know, one of two or three uh, black folks in the area. Yeah, yeah. So had to fight for that. Um, or again, it's like, well, let me fit in and let me go over here and do what they're doing. And that's going to cause me to get in trouble. I got you. So it's like, I'm trying to figure out how to placate everybody and how mm. to appease everybody, losing self. In order to fit in. Yeah. But, in order to find self. Yeah. yeah right. Which right. that ain't the way to do it. Exactly. You know. Right. 100. Right. But that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So then you end up back in Birmingham. Now, I just, I just want to know. So at what age? She said nine. No, she, we moved back when I was uh, going to my freshman year in high school. So it was about, what, 13, 14. Okay. So 13 to 14. Now, had you gotten in any big trouble living yeah. outside of the States? Yeah, I got yeah, I got in some trouble. Like in, with uh, the police. Yeah, yeah, like with the with the military police. Uh, one time, me and my f- couple friends of mine uh, took his dad's car and went on a joyride. We snuck out of our our my parents' house. All of us did, and uh, cl- crawled out the window when everybody was asleep. Went joyriding, and, and I and I don't even know we didn't get caught that night, but uh-huh. some kind of way it got back to him. So we got in trouble behind that. And we literally had to go before like the military police we had to go through that court and all that stuff as well so you know that was one thing you know is and and i can say this about my dad yeah he never would say you need to get your son and or that i never heard him say it and when i talk to my mom now she said he never said that to me really yeah so yeah like like push you off right right push you off like right. telling her yeah like you was creating yeah. you know i guess pain or hurt for him yeah and so to distance himself from you, right? No, he, never he never did, did that. that. He yeah. always owned you. Yeah, and I literally got him called to the carpet behind that incident. Um, if you understand what that means, so he had to. Yeah, well, he, I'm sure he got in trouble, right? Yeah, yeah. He didn't get like reprimanded, but they pretty much, you know, had to kind of they kind of forced him to 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 retire because of really. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, how'd that make you feel? At that time, I really didn't understand mm. what I had done. Right. Oh, that's I'm, good. I'm still only, you know. I knew it was wrong, right? Right. But I didn't know the the, the repercussions of, of 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 what I had sown. I got you. Yeah. I just want to say this too. This is good, and then we'll go mm-hmm. back to Birmingham. But um, when we were doing our men's um, series, right? Um, what we as women learned, and I just learned this from my practice, mm-hmm. is a lot of times that men aren't socialized. Like it's not okay for you really to tap into feeling anyway. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times men, even though when I just ask you, how did that make you feel? You're like, ah, like, I don't even know. Cause most times men 
don't even know right. how you feel. You just keep on moving. Mm -hmm. You just make it make sense, and then you just keep on moving. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now y'all in Birmingham. So we're back in Birmingham. Uh -huh. um, you know, again, now I'm kind of getting back acclimatized to that predominantly black. Um, the, the fortunate thing for me is I have, I played sports, so I was pretty good at sports. Okay. So I still kind of was able to fit into a certain degree. Okay. But again, I still didn't talk like people from Birmingham, Alabama. I right. had a more of a, a proper tone to my, I enunciated my words. So okay. I would get, you know, picked at behind that. You know, I've I gotten several fights as well as that because you know when you get you know they would people would test you right, and you know back in that era they <laughs> black people can resonate black folks probably understand this uh -huh. are you light skinned you soft uh -huh. so I had to show you I wasn't soft it's that Drake thing yeah yeah it's that so Drake. yeah so now I'm you know <laughs> trying to be whatever but you know again it's just a constant journey of evolution of who am I mm. I'm here now I've kind of figured this out now I'm here. And so it was just, and also I can say this, mm -hmm. and 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 I'm fine with being fully transparent about this. Good. I never really understood because I buried the feelings of never seeing my biological father, mm. and I would tell myself, "Forget him. That's his loss. I don't mm. care." Blah blah blah. But as I look back through my life, and then I started going through counseling, yes. I understand what I was doing, why I was doing it because it was a, 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 I buried it and it was a, a coping mechanism. So the way that I would act and respond to things good. was initially predicated on that rejection that yes, I experienced at an early good. age. That's so good. That's so good, Colton. <laughs> yes. Because a lot of people do think that, you know, because that parent is absent, mm -hmm. oh, that doesn't mean anything because mm -hmm. we just keep going on and moving through life. Mm -hmm. But it actually does affect you and yes. your sense of self mm -hmm. and esteem, right? Yep. Because what builds your esteem is when you have these, your first caretakers here and mm -hmm. present because that makes you feel like you're worthy. Right. So when one is gone, then that in some ways make you feel like there's a part of you that's saying that you weren't worthy of them staying. Yep. Yeah. So being angry, being hurt first, mm -hmm. which then came out, the action is anger. Yeah. Right. That's a secondary reaction. A secondary feeling is anger. Yeah. To the hurt of being abandoned. Yep. Yep. Wow. That's good. Yeah. So that abandonment issues often cause you to try to compensate with other people yes. and allow your boundaries not to be what they need to be because you don't want to feel you don't want to let them get close or you feel a kinship mm -hmm. to them and you don't want to, them to abandon you because like, you're not moving in a way that 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 edifies them and so if they you feel like if i do x which i know i need to be doing they're going to leave me and yes. so now i'm abandoned again oh that's so good so I need to be good enough. Like yeah. I need to be whatever yeah, yeah. they want me to be. I need yeah. to be whatever they want me to be. Right. 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 Because what I wasn't enough just right. being me mm -hmm. because he left. Exactly. Oh, that's so freaking good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that you got that. Okay. So yeah. So, so tell us. Yeah. Okay. So now you back and now you fighting because mm -hmm. you fighting light skin. Yep. Yeah. You doing all that. Right. Right. You playing sports. Okay, so now you back your mom and your dad, and this is your stepdad. Yep, yep. Okay, do we even know where your biological dad is? He was in that same city. He was in that same city in Birmingham. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and the crazy if he had a if I he would walk up to me today. Yes, I wouldn't know him. The only reason I would possibly know he was my father is because they say we. My mom says I look just like him. Mm. Um, but you know, I never ever seen him in the. We lived in Birmingham about eight or nine years of my childhood Yeah. before, you know, we military. And then we moved to Huntsville, which was like an hour and a half from Birmingham going into my junior year. Okay. But I never saw that guy. And I, I know he was, he's deceased now. Um, and wow. It is what it is at this point. You know what yeah, I mean? I have yeah. to forgive him mm. because me not, me harboring anything against him is blocking whatever God wants to get to me that's good and so i want to release this and share this story with other people so they understand and they know yes that god shapes your life for a reason come on now how you respond to what you were placed in uh -huh. is totally on you mm. right if i die 
if I was born poor, yes, that's on, on that's on my situation. Okay. If I die poor, uh -huh. that's on me. Oh, I like it. So if I die in the same, I mean, if I die in the same situation that I was born in, yeah, that's nobody's fault but mine. Mm. And so once you, I learned to like take control of my narrative, accountability, and to be accountable for my actions and understand yes. that everything that I do is dependent on my mindset, what I believe about myself. And the beautiful thing about this is, and we'll go back to the story I know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I learned, like, people talk about affirmations. Yes. But the Bible is full of affirmations. Mm. When he tells you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. When he tells you that you are the head and not the tail. Come he on tells now. You are the lender, you are the, the, the lender and not the borrower. Mm. And that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all things that you can ask, think, or imagine through Christ Jesus. And he tells you that you're more than a conqueror. Mm. So those are the things that carry me through because I know this. Anytime the devil will get in my mind and tell me I couldn't do something, uh -huh. you have to understand that the devil is a liar. Yes. And the truth ain't in him. Yes. So if he's telling you that you can't do so something, good. he's lying to you because he knows you can. Yes. He's not going to tell you who truth, who you can truthfully be. Yes. He's going to tell you who you can't be because he can't stop anything that God has placed in me, mm. but he can stop me from getting to a point where I can release it to the world. Oh, that's so good. So you have to take control of your mind. You have to take control of your narrative. You just have to understand, like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to die yes. the way I was born. Mm. I'm not going to the graveyard, which is the richest place on earth mm. with no unfulfilled dreams, not fulfilling my promise and not even just getting to what God has promised me. Yes. We all have like promises that God put inside of us. Yes. And once we learn to deal with our demons, because yes. if you don't deal with your That's demons good. and your trauma, uh -huh. your trauma and demons are going to deal with you and you're going to find relief in people, places and things. Ooh. And that's what I used to do a lot. Oh, that's so like, good. Like, you know, chasing women, uh -huh. thinking that this validated me. Yes. And it, and it actually deterred me from who I needed to be. Come on now. Yes. Yes. It's so good. Okay. Okay. So please. So let so come on, let's go back to Birmingham. Okay, okay, let's go back. <laughs> this is so good. Yeah, so let's go back to Birmingham. Okay, so now you back and you in ninth, ninth grade. grade. I'm in ninth grade. Okay. So, you know, we I'm there we're there for two more years, right? My dad is trying to he's working at the VA, but he's working on getting on with the post office. Um, the best opportunity for him to get on with the post office was in Huntsville, which is like an hour and a half, about eighty mile drive. Um, so I was in Birmingham. I went to West End High School. Shout out West End. Uh oh. West End okay, Lions, West End Alabama, y'all stand up. Okay. Um, we stayed there my freshman and sophomore year. After my sophomore year, my dad got, got the job at the post office. Okay. And we moved to Huntsville, Alabama. So I'm changing. Again. 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 <laughs> so my junior and senior year, I, I go to J.O. Johnson in Huntsville, Alabama, which was a, a, a pretty good school. Okay. Um, My last two years. So now I'm trying to fit back in and find things but I started to kind of level out and you know I wasn't as bad because I had like sports to kind of keep me preoccupied okay that's good um you know I found a, a group of friends you know I still got my best friend he's actually uh, my fraternity brother too nice. um we've been friends since our, our, our junior year my first day of class we met in typing class okay his name is Chris Cummins he's probably going to be watching this okay root to the bros okay. um but we uh became friends and we've been friends ever since so I kind of you know found a circle of people oh, that's to hang with and then I had sports and they were more positive it sounds yeah, like yeah, yeah 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 okay yeah like my mom she every time I talk to her she's literally like I praise God that that, that I met John Young and, and he got you out of Birmingham Alabama <laughs> I mean, because I mean, in Birmingham is just you know, Birmingham's been on the first, was on the first forty eight when first forty eight was on. Oh, it was, was like, it really? that type of place, right? You know, oh. people think you from this this city or that city. Uh -huh. Every hood everywhere is the same, right? You got the same things going on, and so Birmingham yeah. is the same thing. It's 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 people getting shot, people getting killed, drugs. It's just the whole nine. Got you. Okay. All right. So then, okay. So you did, you have a good circle. You found you a new circle, but yet you moved again, mm -hmm. but you found you a new circle. You got acclimated. Now you in school and you doing well. Let me just ask you this before you go a little bit further. Do you have siblings? Cause have it a, sounds like it's just you and your mom. Well, it's just me and my mom. Now I had a little sister. Right. Uh, her name was Andrea as well. Okay. So Come on, Andrea. Um, she was, she was seven years younger than me. So she's, she was my dad, her and my mom. 
my mom and my dad that had, was you know their child together okay um so she was my little baby sister my only sibling okay um so we you know we grew up but i still had a you know there was an age gap between us right? absolutely so you know we were very close you know for big brother and big sister right but we still had that age gap absolutely absolutely and, um, so you know that's another part of the story she died in 2012 of, of unexpected brain aneurysm wow so it's basically my dad died in 2000 of a, a blood clot uh he broke his foot in the wait, blood. wait 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 your stepdad yes okay say that one more time he he died in 2000 of a uh of a blood clot that moved up to his heart from a, a broken foot at work lord um, he died august 6 2000 saying i'll never forget that date because my sons my twin boys they're 23 now out in our mind they were born august 16th 2000 so he died two weeks before they were born. Oh my God. And you know, so that's a whole nother story. We <laughs> like we could probably do about four or five episodes <laughs> because, you know, just to dealing with oh the the God. pain of, of of that going through that with my mom, right? Mm. And seeing how that impacted her and like she literally was in a state of depression for, for, for years. I'm sure. And so, you know, and then when I got we got her out of that, my sister unexpectedly dies of an aneurysm. And I don't fit that gate. The, I, I, that, the dates are so etched in my head. It's crazy. Um, and here's the crazy thing, Andrea. Uh -huh, uh -huh. If what the enemy had planned for my life would have happened, mm. me, my sister, and my dad would be, not be here. Because I know we talk, we'll talk about me getting shot at point blank range. Yes. In, um, January, January 15, 1995. So that would have been 95. I would have passed. My dad would have passed in 2000. My sister would have been 2012. And it would just be my mom. Oh my God. So we, we got a story where they say, you don't know my story. And so oftentimes when I look at somebody who is starting to flourish in life or they're flourishing in life, yeah, I'm happy for them because I don't know what they went through on the back end. And I couldn't have worn them shoes, right? I couldn't have walked them out in them shoes. Yes. Because that, that whatever God has placed on their life, that anointing, that glory, whatever, you, you don't want that, right? And so I, my story, you know, I think I carry it pretty well. Uh -huh. And I, I've just now gotten to the point where I'm okay talking about it. But it ain't it ain't been it ain't been no crystal stare. No way. Okay, hold on. So I I we so we were in Birmingham, mm -hmm. right? And now and I'm so sorry to hear mm -hmm. about your father and your sister passing. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. But then you say even before that. Right, because mm -hmm. I don't want to skip that. Mm -hmm. So from being in Birmingham with your the new people and mm -hmm. your new friends and you're doing well, so okay, how do you end up in a situation where you almost gonna get shot in your stomach? Okay, or well, did you get? I shot? got shot in the stomach. Um, so uh, um, I have what the gangbangers call a zipper. Okay, <laughs> that thing right there, they call that a zipper. Oh, they call it a zipper. Yeah, I, I just found it out recently from uh, somebody. Okay. But uh so I ended up going to the military. I left uh I went to I went to Alabama and M after I graduated. Okay. Stayed there for a couple of years. I ended up leaving and going to the military. Wait, I just need to ask this quickly. So what made you, right, mm -hmm. go to college? It, I'm it, just it's just what we did, right? Okay. You know, it's it's like Cause you know, other guys, right, your age at that time would have chosen to do something different, maybe gang bang. So, okay, you know what though? Maybe it came from what you just said. You said earlier, you said that you were playing sports, mm -hmm. and now you had this new cohort, mm -hmm. and so maybe that was some that was a yeah. norm. Yeah, yeah, that was a norm. So, like most people, where I when we moved to Huntsville, the school Gerald Johnson that I, I graduated from mm -hmm. is literally about a five to seven minute ride from that high school. So we would go up to campus oh. and, you, you know, hang out and, okay. and things of that nature. So, okay. and I work with, I started working my junior year. I met this dude, this this dude, and he's actually my fraternity brother now. Okay. His name is Lee Ivory. And that's how I first learned about Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. And so what I saw about him kind of intrigued me. And so we, he would talk to me and he's like, well, you know, you got to go to college to do X, Y, Z. Mm. And so mostly, you know, maybe a third of the people that went to, to the school there migrated to, to, to A&M. Maybe some of them migrated to Tuskegee. You have Alabama State. Okay. Um, so there's a couple, you know, HBCUs in the area that people migrated to. Got and a couple you. went other places. But that was like the closest thing to do. You know what I mean? Okay. And so I was like, I'm working a fast food job. I know I don't want to do this the rest of my life. Okay. Well, I guess I should go to college like everybody else. 
So I go to college for a couple of years. Okay. It was fun. I had a good time, but I wasn't focused like I needed to be. That's how I ended up going to the military. Mm -hmm. And so I go to the military, um, go to Germany for a while, have a good time there. Um, oh, in the, in the, go back to Germany. Yeah, I go back to Germany. Okay. So okay. I went back to Germany for three more years. Uh -huh. um, go out to California. Go to California, have a great time out there. A great time in great California. Great time, man. I enjoyed Why was it so great in California? It's just, you Let's know, you're know. 22 years old, you know, you're out in Cali, and you're from Alabama, and you think, like, this is the life, because this is mm. what you see on TV, right? Okay. So we got to experience, you know, California life. We would, you know, be in L.A. We would be in, in Oakland. We would just be up and down, down the streets, and literally, um, I, I, I don't forget about it, but I don't talk about it much. I literally was in a near-fatal accident coming from a nightclub in San Jose, going back to base. Um, a guy was, a friend of mine was supposed to be the designated driver. Uh -huh. And uh, I guess he wasn't. And, okay. Um, so it was me, him, and my boy Hall. It's a guy, the boy named Hall. And another, his name, the dude, the driver, his name was Israel. Okay. He runs into the back of a semi at like, you know, three o'clock in the morning because we're headed back to Fort Ord. Um, literally. <laughs> this is crazy. I, I remember going to sleep in the back of his, his, his car. And I literally thought I woke up dead <laughs> because they had pulled me out the car. Oh, my God. And, you know, we have been drinking, you know, doing what young young folks do. do and yeah. they literally were shining the, like a light in my face. And that's and what so, woke you up. Yeah, that's what woke me up. And I'm like, where am I at? I'm thinking, you know, you, you hear about the light. Jesus? You think yeah. it's Jesus? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so we look at, but that, that like, literally, the, the, the top of that car was like, mm. it was smashed in like it was at the junkyard. But me not being. Lord wise enough or or, or 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 what's the word i want to use i just say not wise enough to understand the signs the context okay. clues okay um i just went on about my business mm. like ain't nothing happened and you know got they took us to the hospital got up that same day shoot that same night we was in the club lord have mercy no <laughs> well, you way know, you're 21 22 years old what do you you know what do you expect I got you. You just, I'm just thinking about your neck and your back. Yeah, yeah. But I but, guess that wasn't, and you had played sports and stuff, yeah. so maybe that just wasn't, you just shook it off. Yeah, I just shook it off at Lord. that point. And, you know, and I could say, you know, I'm still here because of the prayers of my grandmother, yes. the wow. prayers of my mom and my mm. dad and my family, because they did set the basis for the foundation. Yes. They were, you know, a spiritual family. Um, just like any other family, they have their problems. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I often say when people talk about how their families are, I mean, if you look at the Bible, <laughs> in the Old Testament, their families is messed up. Mm. Look at Abraham, Isaac. Mm -hmm. You look at, you know, Jacob and Esau. Mm -hmm. You look at Joseph and his brothers. Like, the acrimony was already there. So there's nothing that's changed. Mm. Just the, 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 the time frame and, and where we're at. Mm. Like, but it's it's been the same thing. But they, they prayed for me. Um, so I go from that. Yes. They closed Fort or Fort or down. That's where I was at. And they ship us to, to Fort Hood, Texas. That's where I end up going. Oh, hey, family. Come on over here because I have something for you. Starting off with a go to guide for keeping your minds healthy and strong. This right here is the Bible to mental health. It's your mental health Bible. The name of it is Six Pillars to Power Up Your Mind and Make Mental Health a Lifestyle. Hmm. Everything that you need to know about keeping your minds healthy and strong is in this go-to guide. Where you get it from? Well, you get it from awisebrown.com backslash shop. But in this go-to guide, honey, in this mental health Bible, you know what you're going to find out? You're going to find out the benefits of aromatherapy oh, and how it can shift your mood. But guess what? You don't have to go anyplace else to look for your aromatherapy because your girls got you. Okay? You can get some aromatherapy here. This is aromatherapy. is in this candle. This is called a slice of happiness. It makes me tingle, like literally makes me tingle. A slice of happiness. This is a cruelty-free candle with no parabens, no formaldehyde, and no known suspected carcinogenics. Now, you know you go out here and you find these candles that smell good, but are they good for you? Are they good for your brain? Come on now, get real with yourself. Well, this one smells delicious. 
and it's good for you. Made with essential oils. It's a soy candle. Amazing. Uh, you can burn it or you can just walk by and smell it. Lord have mercy. It's so good. Okay, so that's your, your candle, your aromatherapy, which raises the dopamine in your brain. That's your natural feel good. No transmitters in your brain. All right, y'all. And, oh, I'm a part of you. You're a part of me. We are a family. We got hoodies now, and these are unisex hoodies. And they wear well, they wash well, and they feel so good. So you can wear them over your clothes, you know what I'm saying, and look dope. Or you can wear them as your clothes with nothing under them, which I like to do often. And when you travel everywhere, I mean, every time I wear them, I'm moving around. People are always asking me whether I'm traveling, going to the supermarket. What's that? Who's that? And I'm like, mental health is a lifestyle. Because see, this is on the back. Okay, they come in white and they come in black. I'm like, join the family. Mental health is a lifestyle podcast. So there you go. Family, don't you ever say that I ain't give you nothing. You get all of these things from awisebrown.com backslash shop. All right. I got your goods. I got you. Don't have to go anyplace else. I'll see you on the other side. So I go to Fort Hood, Texas. Wrong place, wrong time, doing the wrong things, and uh, basically got shot. How you just you can't nothing call you I mean, can't you know you when you be when you when you when you be doing the wrong things. I understand when you're place. doing the wrong things. And okay, you, sometimes you just be in the wrong place, right? Right, you 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 be in situations or you be doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Okay, and you you're doing them. And yes, then sometimes there's a repercussion. To, to 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 what you're doing. Absolutely. There's always a repercussion, mm-hmm. right? Even mm-hmm. if you may not get it right in that moment, mm-hmm. but we we will get it, right? All yep. the energy we put out, we're going to receive it, mm-hmm. right? I get that. But you can't just leave us with, I was doing the wrong thing, and then I got shot. I got shot. So basically, it was a scenario um, where some, some things were happening. Okay. And a um, guy had a gun. Okay. And uh, he, he pointed it at me, and I'm like, bro, you better not point that gun at me again and and we had you, some, wait, did you have friends with you yeah I mean, it was me and a couple of my friends okay and um you told them don't point that gun at yeah, you yeah and no sooner than i did that i heard pow and uh next thing i know that's like bro you shot me got hit in the stomach and it was like a somebody took a uh like a fireplace poker and heated it up and stuck it in my stomach and so it uh, felt hot. Yeah, it felt hot, but it's like a delayed reaction. You don't feel it at first, and then it's like, oh my God. And so it's just like a burning sensation. Lord have mercy. And, it, and just like excruciating pain. Like I wouldn't never wish that on my worst enemy. Really? No, I wouldn't. Like I, I, I that's that's like one of the worst worst things in the way to go. So I, I often have a you know, when I hear people die from a gunshot wound or die from, you know, got shot, you know, multiple times. Just the, the the amount of excruciating pain that I know that that person dealt with Experience. before they, you know, transition, unless it was instantaneous, it's is is you know, I, it resonates with me. So basically, they the, the ambulance came. Okay. Um, they, uh, last thing I remember, I remember I had on some black jabos. Okay. I had on a Dallas Ho- Stars hockey jersey. I remember my my people trying to keep me awake because I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm, I just want to close my eyes. You can sleep. remember this. Yeah, I can remember that. I remember that. Just wanting to close my eyes and go to sleep. I remember the ambulance coming. They put me on the gurney, uh-huh. pushing, pulling me into the uh, ambulance. Uh-huh. I remember them cutting the jersey off me and then placing the uh, oxygen, oxygen mask on me. And then the next thing I remember is waking up in the hospital maybe several days later with IVs. And I still actually got like things from the IVs in my, in me, you know, like little markings. And I got like this scar here and I have another scar where they had to go and remove a blood clot from my lung. Mm-mm. They had to go back in and remove the blood clot, clot. And I remember waking up, I remember my father being right there with his Bible and just a couple of people, you know, around. And I remember it looked like my dad was saying a prayer in the room or something like th- to that extent. And oh, th- that's what I remember waking up. I had like morphine on demand where I could just 
push it. Shit, I would shoot myself up when the pain got too excruciating. You know, they of course they 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 controlled how much the dosage was, and right. I could do it. But I remember all that, and so I was in the hospital for about a month. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, in your stomach. Yep, yep. I literally got. Here's the here's the thing though. The doctor said that. I don't know which directionality um, the bullet could have went, uh-huh. but if it would have went like whatever direction, like he said, it was literally centimeters, it would have actually hit my aorta and I would have instantly died because I would have bled out. And literally what it did is it, it ended up, I guess, bouncing around in there. I had a liver, la- it, 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 it lacerated my liver, mm. which actually, it, this is how great God is. Come on too, now, God. That. The liver actually can repair itself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that was one of the only things that's damaged. I actually still have the bullet lodged in me because it's too close to my spine, and they didn't no. want to. Yes. So when I go get an X-ray, they'll see it in there. Um, but they it's very close to my spine, so they didn't want to operate for fear of uh, paralysis. Right. So if you know anything would go wrong, I could possibly be paralyzed from that surgery. So I got those reminders, you know, consistently there for me to, you know, be mindful of. I'm here. Yes. Now that's for anybody that whatever you've gone through, no matter what it is, if you're still here, you're here for a purpose. Reason, yes. You're here for a reason. God is not going to allow you to go through what you go through for any just for just for happenstance, just yes. for a reason. What you have to do is figure out what that reason is, mm-hmm. tap into it, it's mostly good. tap into who who God wants you to be, like uh-huh. be the man for me. And so, like one thing I I like to do is try to 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 to, to um, galvanize men uh-huh. to us to understand who we are, what we're supposed to be, yes. equipping with the tools to do the things that they're supposed to be, yes. so we can go out and we can change our our homes, our communities, our the world. Like those, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Like we're supposed to be leading, yes. not following or just just allowing. We should be in. Our plane in our place in our lane doing what we're doing so yes. that i think that's part of my purpose is god left me here for that reason to you know get to this point where i can do those things okay good i, I love that i love that that is so aligned with my purpose mm-hmm. same thing men and women mm-hmm. i love that and and um and i want to talk a little bit about how you're doing it now, because mm-hmm. I know you are, you know, with the mm-hmm. podcast. So I want, I want everybody to, to know about that, mm-hmm. but, um, I need to know, okay. After, so first thing I need to know, I just need to know this. Did they catch the guy that shot you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. So that situation is, you know, this is, it's, it's been taken care of. It's, it's no big deal. Okay. Um, I don't have any, there's no ill will between, you know, me and that person. Got you. Um, you weren't friends with him. Yeah, we were friends. Colton. Y'all were friends? Mm-hmm. But y'all weren't there together. We were in the same place at the same time. I know y'all yeah. was at the same I know, and I understand yeah. you only going to give certain little things. I, I get that. I respect that. I'm just saying, did y'all go to this place together or just somebody that you knew? We were there together. God darn it. Okay, so that must that's gonna come out in your book. So he gonna write a book one day, <laughs> cause he give it all that up, and that's okay, cause God may be telling you to hold on to that. But um, what? Okay, and so now you at the place. Okay, so they were found out, and um, and so you said you've forgiven them. Yeah. So what made you forgive them? Counseling and just oh. going through, you know being able to exercise forgiveness for, you know, even my, my father, right? Mm. Like unforgiveness is like cancer. Yes. That's so good. Come on. And it will metastasize and, and just ruin your life. Mm. And I just don't want to, you know, and I, I look, I got things I need God to do for me because I'm still a work in progress. I still got things I need forgiveness for, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I can't be trying to hold a grudge from somebody else and asking God to forgive me. Yes. Right. You know, We've all done things that we aren't proud of. We've yes. all made mistakes. And ultimately, what what is me holding a grudge against anybody going to do? Mm, okay, that's good. It's not going to change them. That's right. It's not. It's only, you know, they're, what probably they say. Sleeping, they're probably sleeping fine. Yeah. 
I'm mm-hmm. the one that that is restless, can't sleep, That's and right. have an anxiety That's because right. I'm thinking about That's the scenario. Good. And that person has gone on, moved on with their life. Well, that's good. Everybody has to pay for what they do, right? Yes. The Bible said everybody's going to have to pay for according to their works. Yes. So he's going to have to pay for his for his for his life. I'm going to have to pay for mine. That's so 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 good. That's so good. I always say that. You never have to get anybody back Mm -hmm. because God, the universe is Mm going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Yeah, exactly. Take your hands off of it and Mm -hmm. be good. Ooh, so that's good. Okay, so then was it then at that moment, like after healing, that the change came for you? Was it then when you decided, you know, okay, I got purpose and this is what this purpose is? Yeah, it, or was, had it, you... it was a gradual progression. I started down the path. Okay. But I still hadn't figured out who I was supposed to be, right? Because mm. sometimes you get, you know, you go through these these life-changing scenarios and situations, and they're like a wake-up call. But then you have people that you rely and trust, which was like my grandmama, my family. Mm. Boy, the Lord didn't save your life. You need, you better, you better do this. What that? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's they in your, right. in your head. Yes. And so you're, you're you're dealing with the aftermath of this traumatic event, not knowing that what you're dealing with. But you're like, okay, maybe they're right. Mm. So I started walking down a path, but that path wasn't authentic to me. Ah, tell me what that path was. Um, you know, ministry and okay. all that, but you know, again, um, just that just wasn't authentic to me because yes. I still find myself trying to, you know, mimic and emulate what I had seen or what I was learning, mm. and so it was just never. I was just ever never able to get myself grounded in what I was supposed to be doing. You know, again, when you got you know people, you have mm-hmm. to be careful with, uh-huh. with when people like. They know something's in you. Yes. But they kind of push you down a certain path. Yes. You really have to take time to 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 get get That's get in tune with God to yes. understand what your path is. That's right. Because if you don't, you got somebody will send you down the path they think you need to go. Yes. And that path is not the path that you need to go. It's yes. Like, you know, if I'm gonna come down, come down here, I can go seventy five, uh-huh. straight seventy five. Okay. I go down six thirty five. Here, Abrams come all the way down. Uh-huh. So. A lot of times people will take you the way they think you need to go. Right. And that's not the way it, you should go. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that comes from their stuff, from mm-hmm. their story, mm-hmm. right? Yep. That's what that comes from. But it has nothing to do with you and what right. God has for you. Right. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Right. Okay. So, you know, again, it's, uh, I could say I'm a series of, uh, uh, of learning experiences mm-hmm. that, that I can share with people if that's what, you know, you know, they want to learn. Uh-huh. Um, I know that, you know, what I went through is not going to resonate for everybody. But I also know that I have a spirit of people that I should influence and I'm supposed to influence yes. because they're going to resonate with my story. So those are the people that I hope to, you know, be able to help, you know, for them to navigate their journey and mm-hmm. understand you have to go through this thing yourself. You have to figure it out yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to be who you want to be and be authentic to that because that is who you that's how you're going to be able to flourish in life. Right. That's good. So I was dealing with that, you know, at that time. We really didn't I really didn't know what PTSD was. Yes. And I had PTSD and I didn't know what that was. Absolutely. You so had I'm PTSD. Dealing with that right. And I'm doing, you know, so I'm kind of doing this and I'm trying to deal with this. I'm waking up with nightmares, replaying mm. the event in my head. Like I'm literally like suddenly being woken up out of my sleep, dreaming about like the replay of the event. Mm. Um, so it was just trying to figure out things. And, you know, I think it's so great what you're doing just as far as mental health mm-hmm. with men is concerned. Mm-hmm. And I would say for anybody, I think, matter of fact, I think the whole black community has PTSD. I do too. And I Absolutely. think everybody needs to go see somebody yes. to deal with their, to deal with their trauma and their yes. demons. Yes. Um, and if you can do that, you can really just tap into who you want to be, yes. who you're designed to be, yes. and you can flourish in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because our trauma holds us back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if we don't kind of clean that out and figure it out, mm-hmm. yeah, then we'll be really on a life of turmoil and pain consistently and put other people in that, right? Because mm-hmm. we'll project mm-hmm. our, our pain onto other people, right? Mm-hmm. Hurt people, hurt people. Exactly. No, it's it's just, so- that's that the repetitive cycle. And I use the analogy is like when you're pulling up weeds, if you're not careful, you only pull the weed up at the surface. 
Sometimes you got to dig, dig down deep. to the root. Get to the root. Get to the root. If you That's pull right. the root up, that weed is gone. That's right. But if you don't, so if you don't good. get to the root, that that weed gonna come back and it's gonna come back stronger. Yes. So you thinking that you're if you're doing something surface level, you're not really dealing with the issues. Get to the root cause of the of the issue. Pull it up at the at, at the surface all the way to the core, uh-huh. and then you can really start to see your garden grow and flourish. It's so good. Okay, so now you get out the hospital. Mm-hmm. You've chosen to forgive at mm. some point, whenever mm. that was. Um, and you've mentioned this several times today, which is amazing. I'm going to get there mm. right now. Mm. So you went to therapy. Now, what made you go to therapy? Is a black man, what made you go to therapy? You know, we was raised when we was younger. Mm. They said you were supposed to pray it away. Or if you go to, you know, anything that had to do with mental health or psychiatry or psychology, then that meant you was crazy. So there was a huge stigma. So I love that. What made you as a black man decide to go to therapy? Well, just one, trying to figure out what was wrong with me um, mm-hmm. as far as the, the incident when I started under, understanding what, uh, you know, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder is, um, and re- and just hearing more about it and seeing it. And I'm like, maybe I think that might be what's wrong with me, right? Oh, that's good. And, um, you know, I couldn't sleep at night. I, I literally would drink myself to sleep mm-hmm. just so I could not have a dream oh just so you can be out cold yeah so i can be out cold so i wouldn't have to replay that event in my head or deal with like whatever was going on in my head Mm. Um, because then if not i would just sit there and just kind of just go through this abyss of 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 cesspool of of bad thoughts Mm. and so i'm like i got to do something this ain't working and then my life was Uh just in turmoil like you know relationships falling apart Mm. Um, life falling apart. Like it just wasn't, you know, on the outside, it looked like everything is cool, Uh but on the inside, it's like everything is crumbling. Mm. And I was like, I just can't live like this. And I don't want to be like no alcoholic. I don't want to drink myself to death. Yes. I don't want to continue to do this. And then just, you know, decisions that my decision making was, was horrible, Mm. you know, for, for a grown man. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's almost embarrassing. So he's like, I, it's something wrong with me to be mm. doing all these things yes and i know better come on now yeah that's so good so you're like i need to figure out what this mm. is and yep. the why right so once i did that you know i went through the you know went through the va because you know i, I get disability from the, from the va yes so we went through that process they they died they you know gave me a proper diagnosis of PS, P, ptsd and anxiety um and then, you know, as I did that, then I started saying, well, maybe I need to talk about some of these other things that yes. I dealt with as well. So yes. I started seeking so that out as well. Yes. Because, I, you know, one thing I don't want to do is just continue to be on that hamster wheel of, of, of bad decisions, of bad relationships, of, bad, of, of just a, a, a bad life. Right. Yes. And never reaching the potential of who I could be mm. because I didn't do the, the work necessary. Like I couldn't face myself. Mm. Oh, that's so good. And that's the biggest thing that we have to do as men is we got to learn to face ourselves. Because here's the thing. I could I could I could put on a facade with you, mm-hmm. with everybody I meet. But when I'm alone at my house and I'm looking in the mirror or I'm talking to God, God knows exactly who I am. Yeah. He knows exactly what I'm dealing with. Yes. And you just can't you can't outrun it. Wow. Which I could see would which would make you want to pick up a bottle. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause nobody wants to face that pain, yeah. but thank God you was up for the challenge of yeah. I got to do something because this is failing. Yeah, I and usually that's what and usually that's what change occurs is when we kind of hit a rock bottom, mm-hmm. right? But okay, good because I was going to ask you that. So you said felt relationships, but you just said I had I had kids. Mm-hmm. So now, at what point did you have kids? Like, what? Tell me about mm-hmm. that. So my my oldest is I had her when we, I was twenty six. Okay. And then my youngest, I had her. She's she's nine, going on ten. So uh, okay. it's kind of spaced out. Um. So you know, the twins, the youngest. Yeah, you mentioned the, twins. Yeah. So okay, come on, give them to us, Colton. Come on. You have Alan and Armand. They're they're twin boys. They're twenty three. You have Alexis. She is twenty seven. She lives here. Uh, Alan is in the, the military. He's in Tokyo. Okay. Um, uh, he, he lives with me. Um, we're working on, on him. Uh, okay. He's going to be amazing, but he just has to find himself. Okay. And then I have Addison. We have uh, Carrington. So that's the, the mix of the mix, mix of kids. And they, uh, they're good kids. And so, you know, I just needed to, like, just be better. You know, even, like, some other things I deal with. It's funny, like, even 
repeating as I got to learn more about my biological father. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. funny how you can even repeat those cycles and you don't understand why you're repeating those cycles because you don't know where you are or who you are, but you end up repeating those same cycles, <laughs> which has there's been done in the Bible too. So just even trying to navigate through that and like, I just don't want to finish that cycle and be that person. Yes, so, you want to break the cycle. Yeah, I want to break that curse. But I'm thinking what you're saying is, is um, <clears throat> sometimes we can continue a generational cycle, mm -hmm. right? A dysfunctional cycle um, from a parent that we don't even, we're not even around, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, I, okay, this person did this. So you like, okay, so that was my father. He's not my life. So how am I doing the same thing that he's doing and he's not my life? So they call it a nurture or nature, right? Mm -hmm. Is it just um, what you were born into or is it your environment? Mm -hmm. And it actually is both of those things uh -huh. who shape who we are. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so it's, good. It's crazy. It's like the DNA passes through you, that DNA and that spirit or that energy passes on yes. through you. And so you wonder like, why, why do I do these things? Or why have I made these same mistakes? And again, if you don't know, then you don't know, understand. But then if you know, and you start to like understand, yes. it's like, you got to be uh, wise enough and, and you have to have your ears open enough to, to see and hear what's happening to you and why you're doing it and then do something about it. Right. Yes. And that's where it stop talking tough and living weak. Oh, that's where that, that came right. from. Yeah. That's like, okay, I'm talking this, this talk, I'm going to do this, but on the background, I'm still repeating these cycles. I'm still walking mm. this path that okay. is, that is low. Mm. As, as some people say, low vibrational. Yes. You know what I'm saying yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm walking yeah. this low vibrational path mm -hmm. when I really should be up here Yes, because I have, I have, uh, King, 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 kingdom mindset in me, and yes. I'm a part of the kingdom, mm -hmm. and so I'm not. I'm literally walking way below the parallel that I should be. Got you. So you started. You made a commitment, mm -hmm. and then you were consistent about your decision making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. that's what it is. That's what yep. change is, right? Yep. Is you making you seeing your mm -hmm. worth, mm -hmm. and once I see who I'm, my worth, right? You said. I'm, you didn't say I'm a God mm -hmm. body, but mm -hmm. you said you walking in the, the in the kingdom, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that represents the same thing. Yep. Represents the same thing. So as a king, then I know that I can commit mm -hmm. to anything that I want, mm -hmm. right? And so then, from my commitment, I honor my commitment, and then I'm consistent about making decisions. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we perfect, right. because sometimes we fall off. Right. However, the goal is is to honor my commitment. And be consistent with my decision making. That is 100% accurate. You know, um, I've heard it said, you know, several times. It's like, I don't want to be David. David slay, slayed Goliath, but he lost to Bathsheba. Mm. That vice got him. Mm. So you, we can be out here slaying giants all day. Lord, But then our vice <laughs> can get us and cause so much turmoil on the back end and wreck everything that we're building. Wow. Come on, that man. we don't understand it, but if we don't deal with that, like that, that, that vice and, and, and get that dysfunctional coping yeah. strategies, dysfunctional yeah, exactly. coping skills, numbing, mm -hmm. numbing, uh, what will we call them? I call them maladaptive mm -hmm. behaviors, mm -hmm. but they just numb your situation. They don't fix it. Right. But they just numb it, distract you. Exactly. Mm. And, and what I've learned in this process uh -huh. is I really had to, 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 to renew my neural pathways. Oh, come because on Because my neural pathways have been accustomed to me doing things a certain way, which is, you know, the least, the least route of resistance. And it, and it made me feel okay about myself. Easy. But so now you, when you start to re renew those neural pathways, that's why the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. You got to train your mind and you have to create new neural pathways right. of how you respond to what's going on in your life. And so what you used to have that, that flight risk, or you would just, you know, acquiesce to, to that inner demon. Now I got to conquer that inner demon. I got to do the thing that I know that I don't want to do mm. in this time in order for me to establish a new neural pathway. So that the more I do this thing, the easier it is for me to bypass the thing that will have me in a ditch. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me think about um, Steven that I did that series mm -hmm. with when he said, um, he said, collecting women for him was easy mm -hmm. he said it was so easy he said but then that's when he decided that like no i, I want to be a man i want to mm -hmm. be a man's man which means that there's some challenge in that mm -hmm. yeah and he said and that 
is what changed his life. Yeah, his commitment right. to that. Right, because here's the thing about like even if, as far as collecting women, I, I think a lot of men have been down that path. I've been down that path, mm -hmm. and you're the common denominator in that equation. Mm -hmm. So if you don't deal with you, it's going to be the same thing with every woman. You're going to continue to repeat that cycle. You're going to continue to do the same things over and over. At this point in my life, if I'm not making my wife a better person mm -hmm. just by me being there and how I lead, I don't have to tell her what I'm doing. Just yes. lead by example then I've failed as a man anyway. Mm. If I'm not making people around me better, that's not me being a man. That's oh, not that's me good. leading. I should be leading and making people better mm. by the, by the actions, right? They say faith is faith should be visible by your actions, what people observe mm -hmm. and what, and what people and what you do mm. in, in that form. So what you believe in, people should be able to see it. Mm. You should believe it. And it should, and it should, produce fruit mm. if it's something positive all right so if i'm not doing those things like that's kind of like where i talk about the genesis 1 and 28 model and mindset yeah so basically that's how i base my life and write i'm, I'm going to write a book about this too one day okay and please it's gonna be, and it's going to be a um like a, a series of teaching i believe that i'm going to be able to teach men right so as men and even women like just as people we have yes. to get back to this point where we 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 are fruitful. Mm -hmm. We multiply. Mm -hmm. We subdue. We have dominion. All right. So if you do those four things every day, if you're intentional about being fruitful with mm -hmm. what God has given you, that's not talking about just having children. Right. That's talking about with the knowledge God has given you. Yes. You be fruitful and you plant the seeds. Mm -hmm. Those seeds are going to multiply. When you multiply, it, it's going to spread. Right. The more you, the, the bigger the, the the more the bigger the number you multiply, the bigger the number. Mm -hmm. And then you, when you subdue. That means that you had to deal. You had to subdue yourself. Mm. You had to subdue the inner me, mm -hmm. not the enemy. The mm -hmm. inner me. I got what, it. What What is tripping you up? Like whatever is your imposter syndrome. If it, it is your um, lack of confidence in yourself, mm. it is it's your 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 how you were brought up, and you're using it as a crutch. You have to subdue all that stuff mm. to become a better version of you, and then you have to dominate whatever your 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 lane you're in in life, mm -hmm. and what you're trying to do, and just have dominion over that. And that really just means lead. You have to lead in what you're doing and you have to operate and move in a spirit of excellence mm -hmm. in everything that you do. And I believe that if we do those four things day, daily, like religiously, like we will see a change in our life mm -hmm. because that's what I've been doing over the past two years is making sure I've been just being fruitful, multiplying, subduing and have dominion over cross and what I can control. I love that. Okay. So you say your wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then at what point? Did you get married? Did you choose to get married? We got married uh, 2018. Okay. 2018. We got married 2018. Okay. Uh, we were together for a couple of years. We, we broke up for a year. We got back together. Um, and we're, you know, we're growing. Okay. Uh, growing. That's um, right. So we've been, we've been, we've been married uh, five years now. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. She's a, she's a great woman. Um, she's, uh, she's beautiful. She's smart. She's intelligent. Love it. I'm proud of her. And, you know, it's been a journey for both of us because we both had to grow. And you both sometimes, you both come from backgrounds mm -hmm. and you don't realize it, that that's what attract you to each other. That's right. Oh, that's and, so good. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and then so when you're seeing the uh, manifestation manifestation of what you've attracted, yes. you're like, man, this is me, a mirror of me. There's a, it's always a mirror of you. That's mm -hmm. right. And your stuff. That's mm -hmm. so good. And then so you, 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 you start. You know, when she, once you wake up and smell the coffee, as they say, and you realize, like, I can't continue to do this. Mm. Or she says, I can't continue to do this. And we have to progress. And yes. so that's what, you know, that's that's our main thing is, is just progressing yes. and getting 1% better than we were the day before. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. So now tell everybody where you, so, okay, how they can find you and what it is that you're doing now. So I know one of the things are, cause it, I know that's a part of your goal mm -hmm. and the purpose for being right. Mm -hmm. That's why God brought you through all those things, mm -hmm. um, to this moment. So you have a podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell us about the podcast. So, so, people can... so we have, uh, I have two podcasts. Okay. Uh, one is called the elevated mindset podcast. It's me and my, my, my little, I call him my little brother. Okay. His name is Kevin Lee. He, he goes by Kevin Empowers. 
So we talk about the elevation of, of mind, body, and soul. Mm. And uh, we talk about it from a, from a seasoned perspective and a young perspective. Seth, Kevin is in his uh, early, mid-20s. Okay. I'm in my, you know, just, you know, hit my 50s. Okay. So we, we, we cover the gamut. So it's from 18 to hopefully, you know, 70 years old. We can catch men in that, in that space. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's the Elevated Mindset Podcast. You can follow you can follow it on any um you know streaming platform. Okay. Apple, um, Spotify, YouTube, the whole nine. Then we also have uh, my podcast is called the Genesis, the Renaissance of Manhood. Okay. And so that's the what we where we're delving into Genesis one and twenty eight, and we're breaking down those principles and trying to set a basis um where we get back to the beginning and how it was originally intended to be, so we can grow as men and impact our families our communities our jobs our, our, our the world you know we're all called to discipleship in some way form mm -hmm. or fashion and you know my thing is right now is the marketplace i call it a marketplace ministry okay which is not the four walls of the church everybody yes. thinks i gotta i have a calling on my life i have to go into church no you you, you can do it every anywhere you are yes so um, i'm trying to build that discipleship of, of christ through the through the podcast okay. so the genesis podcast the Elevated Mindset Podcast are, are two two of my platforms. Okay. And I'll make sure that I put those mm -hmm. down under the podcast. Okay. So is there something else that you want to say before I kind of ask you these last questions? No, like, I just want to tell everybody, yeah. uh, you know, hopefully something that you heard in this podcast will, 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 will peak you and, and push you towards dealing with what you have to deal with in order for you to get who you are supposed to be. Because I say this all the time. If we don't reach our potential, we're living way beneath our privileges. Mm. And there's so many things that God has designed for you to have in this life. And don't look at me and say, well, that's you. I can't do that. I'm no better than you. I'm, I'm, I'm no, no greater than you. I'm just a person who realized who I am, whose I am, and why I'm here. And I decided to do something about it. Mm. Do not give anybody the power to dictate how your life should turn out. You take control of that and relish in that and understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I love it. It's so good. It's so dope. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, but I got to mm -hmm. just ask you this, just, okay. just, just this, and then we done. So, hmm, I want to ask you, if you could tell your younger self something, what would it be? If I could tell my younger self something, it will be to reverse engineer the decisions I made in my life. Mm. I start with the end in mind mm. and then make my decisions based on where I wanted to go. Mm. And to understand that sometimes you're not meant to fit in. So relishing who God has made you to be, because that is actually your gift and your superpower. Oh, that's so good. You're not, you, sometimes you're not meant to fit in, mm -hmm. right? That's right. your superpower. Right, right. Yes. Because that Ooh, is that is so going to be what what God is going to use to 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 get His message out to the masses. Which is what's going on right mm -hmm. now with you. I love it. Okay. Mm. What is something that you believe every man should know about life? What I believe that every man should know about life that life is not about you. Oh. And that you have an assignment on your life and you need to spend time determining what that assignment is so you can fulfill it. <laughs> okay. That is freaking awesome. All right. I love it. I love it. Cause I agree. Love it. Okay. Um, mm. If you could encourage men to change one thing, one thing, what would it be? Mm, let's see. The one thing that I would uh, encourage men to change is the thought process that you have to be invincible and you have to be tough and you have to be macho. You have to learn to deal with, with the feelings that are going on inside of your mind because they're real. And you're, you're experiencing them for a reason. And so this this mindset and this pride that you have to be, you know, superhero and you have to be King Kong is really slowly killing you. Mm. Because you never deal with that 
that needs to be dealt with and you never face your demons. So I would say, you know, just let the pride go, let the macho ism go and just seek help. Mm. Like it takes a strong man to seek help. So good. Colton. That's so good. All right. This is the last one. Okay. Do you believe that every man has the ability to transform? Yes, I do. It's up to you though, right? Mm. And you have to face, again, it goes back to facing your issues and understanding that you can be better. Mm. And it, that's if you want to be better, right? The presence, your present state is not your end state. The only way it's your end state is if you allow it. Mm. So I think everybody has the capacity to, to grow because look at it this way. Anything not growing is dying. Mm -hmm. So if you're not growing, you're just slowly dying. And you don't want to be a person that is lives for 80 years, but you die when you were 21. Mm. And you're just a walking zombie. You're just a walking dead. And that's what happens when you don't understand that you have the capacity to grow. And it's imperative that you grow mm. because if you're still doing the same things, like if I'm still doing the same, they say a person changes every 10 years. Mm. So if I'm still doing the same things I was doing 10 years ago, I failed as a man. Wow. So you should be growing and you should be ever evolving. Everything grows, everything, ev everything evolves. And there's always seasons in life, right? There's, there's, there's winter, there, there's spring, there's summer, there's fall. Mm. That's for a reason. So that the the earth can evolve. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to go through those seasons as a man yourself so you can evolve and become the highest form of yourself and the divine form of yourself so you can get. I say this to anybody. The mm -hmm. desires that you have in your heart, yes, they're there for a reason. Mm. The dreams that you see in your mind, God placed them in your in, in there for a reason. It's like a it's like a preview to a movie of your life. You just have to do the work to win the role. And let the movie play out. Listen. I'm going to leave it right there. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's everything I'll be saying. You said it, Carlton. Thank you. This has been a pleasure. Like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited as to what this is going to do. I am already claiming it. I'm already claiming it. So thank you for coming thank and you for joining me. me. Yes on uh the mental health is a lifestyle podcast so i'll see you family i ain't saying nothing else that was it bomb bomb drop uh mic drop all everything <laughs> <laughs> so y'all know it's get up do what you gotta do you can transform i love it don't you walk around here like a zombie that's right i know that's right yeah, make okay sure y'all tune into her podcast yes my podcast and your podcast tell them one more time the Elevated Mindset Podcast and the Genesis. You share, like, and follow all three of them because we are going to be the spark that changes the world. I love it, love it, love it. All right, family, I will see you guys on the next episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle Podcast. Bye. <laughs>